Beauty Essentials Unit is a collection of effects for both beauty and image restoration available exclusively for Final Cut Pro. While we have a tutorial on the flagship effect, Beauty Studio, there are several other effects to play with. In this movie, we're going to take a look at iLight, which had Mocha parameter tracking added when Continuum 2023.5 released. We're going to take a look at how we can use this effect classically, not to mention in a stylistic way to create reflections in a subject's eyes. Let's dive in to Beauty Essentials. Okay, I'm inside a Final Cut and I have the clip that I'd like to work with. What I'd like to do is brighten up this subject's eyes a little bit better. In order to do that, inside my effect browser, I'm gonna to head to BCC Lights. And if you have Beauty Essentials installed, you'll see BCC Plus Eye Light. We're gonna apply that to the clip. And in the center of the image, you should see a slight sliver that is brightening a portion of this video clip. Now we can take this and with the on-screen controls, move it over the subject's eyes, which is intended for. But since we're gonna bring this over into Mocha for parameter tracking its position over time, I want you to see exactly what we're working with. So let's exaggerate the parameters just a little bit. Inside the light section in the inspector, I'm gonna decrease the blur X, and now we can see the shape of the eye light and increase its brightness. We can actually choose from two blend modes, add or screen depending on how we'd like to mix it in with the underlying clip. We also can add some color to this by selecting a preset gel. So in studio situations, this could work just great. I'll bring this back to custom, which is just taking in the color set by this swatch over here. I'm gonna go down where we have a series of transform properties in the inspector and just decrease the scale of the eye light a bit, as well as just rotate it slightly. Now, in order to track this, I'm gonna to head to the top of the effect and click on that Mocha parameter tracking button. So now that that's pressed, I'm inside of Mocha and I see two on-screen controls in the middle of the viewer here. The crosshair represents where the tracking data is gonna be applied to. And in this case, it's in the center of the eye light. And this outer circle represents the area that we're gonna search for this point. I'm gonna increase the search area. I'm just gonna make it so it's the size of the eyes. And I'm also gonna go over one of these corners where I'm gonna rotate this slightly. Now, this happens to lie on a layer called position. So in fact, we can double click this to call this eye light data. And what we track is available here in the essentials tab as long as you're here in the Essentials workspace. For more about how to track with Mocha masking and Mocha parameter tracking, Ian Anderson has you covered on Boris Effects Learn. So in this particular case, I wanna track translation, scale, and rotation, which happened to be the movement of the shot. And I just wanna note that there is a ton of raindrops here, which in some cases do land above the search area. So it might throw off our track, but we'll deal with it when the time comes. First off, I'm gonna click on this button right here in the Essentials tab to track forward. And we can see with the slow motion footage, it does a good job. The area that I've tracked is identified here with purple. And if I go back to this divider line, I'll now track backward. We can see here that although there were foreground subjects blocking the tracking plane, the track was still successful. I'm just gonna play this back so you can see the track. And a couple important things to note. Number one, this data is automatically gonna be transferred over into Final Cut and hold that position data. Number two, keep in mind that your clip needs to be compounded in order for Mocha parameter tracking to work. I'm gonna click on here just to escape and press save. And once I head inside of Final Cut, I'm just gonna skim over this portion of the timeline so you can see that indeed the mask travels with the subject's face. Now to integrate this a bit better, I'm gonna select this. Let's increase the blur of the eye light a bit and now decrease the brightness to something like 50. While subtle, if I turn this off and on, once I go back to the beginning of the clip and play this full frame, we can see here that it adds a nice little bit of focus to the subject's eyes. And now let's take a look at a more complex example using Beauty Studio, not to mention iLight in two different ways to come up with the final result. All right, I've jumped into a new project that we're gonna work with, and there happens to be a couple of effects already on this clip. First off, Let's double click it because I've already compounded it. 
And if we take a look at this, there are two effects on the clip. So first off, let me just turn them both off. The first is Beauty Studio, and we'll see that it adds a bit of softening to the subject's skin. If I show its parameters, a few things to take a note of. One is if I go from view output to match, the white areas represent the parts of the subject's skin which are affected. Now, this was achieved by heading to the bottom of the effects matte section and choosing two pixels of the subject's skin by selecting a color A and a color B in the matte and then refining the matte options. Now this was combined with a mocha mask in order to not have Beauty Studio affect the subject's arm, not to mention her ear. Now, while we can't see this in matte view, in fact, I'll change that back to output, we can go into pixel chooser mocha. And if I view the matte mask, I just wanna show you that I track the ear, not to mention her foreground arm over time. If I go into mocha mask, you can see the two loose layers that were used for creating the arm and the ear mask. So if I close down Mocha and turn off the view matte mask, the two Mocha mask combined with the smoothing ended up in the results of Beauty Studio only affecting the subject's skin, mostly on her face. Now, in order to make sure that you get your desired results with Beauty Studio, I highly recommend going to the smoothing section and playing with the various values underneath. To show you too, if I go here into smallest details, you'll notice that I dialed this down quite a bit in order to bring back some of the details in her face. Same thing with small details while leaving medium details. And if you have other detail levels, you could set large and largest details to also high. Simply turn off and on the effect to see the effect these parameters have on the subject's skin. So I'm now gonna just hide the properties for Beauty Studio. And then we can also see that there are black areas under the subject's eyes. If I turn on eye light, which I've already added, and click on the Mocha parameter track button, you'll see here, similar to the first example, you can see that I track the subject's nose over time. Now back in Final Cut, if I turn off and on the eye light effect, we can see its effect, not to mention the end result if I play this back over time. Now, something creative that we can do with eyelight is also use it to add reflections in the subject's eyes. Let's take a look at an example of this. So with the same clip that I applied the Beauty Studio as well as the first layer of eyelight, we're going to head to BCC Lights, apply another eyelight that we'll use as a reflection. Let's position the on-screen controls over the right eye, bring down the blur amount under light and increase its brightness. And I'll head to the transform section where I'll lower the scale to 15 and I'll rotate this in the direction of the eye. Now, like we've done before, I'm going to track this inside of Mocha. So I'll click on the Mocha parameter tracking button. Now inside of Mocha, I'm going to increase the position search area so that it encompasses her whole eye as well as is rotated in the direction of it. Move its position and just looking here at the layers, the position data. I'm gonna track this forward using the default values. I'll now head back to the first point, track this backward. Okay, let's play this back. It's tracked that position, rotation, and scale data successfully. And I'll head back into Final Cut by closing out Mocha, saving that. You can now see that that Band-Aid travels with the eye. Now, in order to have it act like a reflection, let's increase the blur of this. I'll decrease the brightness a bit. Let's play with a gel preset here. I'll choose pale violet. And that might need some adjustment there with the brightness value. And then we can head to the bottom of the effect where I'll actually separate the scale X and scale Y and scale Y just jumps to hundred. So I'll bring that value down to 10 and then just start to play with the scale X accordingly. If I go back to the beginning of the project, we can take a look here at the results of now that little reflection we've added to the eye. Now, one thing to note is this reflection might not actually travel with the eye. You might wanna have it stagnant and then use mocha masking instead, which is built inside of eye light. And show one final thing. And that is, if I head back to mocha parameter track, I'm gonna save this work I did by going to the file menu, 
and choosing to export the project. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can copy it onto another effect that I might have inside of Beauty Essentials or even Continuum FCP. So I'll call this Eye Reflection and then just save this out. And now to show you how to work with this, I'm gonna close out Mocha. And inside of the BCC Lights category, I'm gonna select BCC plus Chroma Bands. So if I look at Chroma Bands, let's bring down its scale to 10 to fit the eye, play with its aspect ratio and also its angle. So it's almost like this highly stylized reflection inside the eye. We can also play with other values such as the softness and the chroma and even the cycles to integrate it better. Always best to click off of the effect so that you can see it without the on-screen controls. I'll click on chroma bands again and uh, just bring that aspect ratio back up to one. Now, if I head back to Mocha Parameter Track, you'll see it has its own unique position layer inside of it. Now, what I'd like to do is go to the File menu inside of Mocha and choose Merge Project. This is gonna allow me to bring in that eye reflection project that I saved out and open it inside of this one. Now, I have two positions now. One position happens to be the one from Eyelight. It has the bigger search area. And the other is the one that I'm currently working with in Chroma Bands. First off, on this specific frame, I'm gonna move the position and the search area of this over here. And just so that you can see the differences between the two, I'm gonna turn off this position, which happens to be Chroma Bands and rename that layer for P Chroma Bands. And it just so happens that I can link it to the other position, which I'll also rename P Highlight. And in order to do that, I'll go back to the P Chroma Bands and by selecting its layer properties, link that Chroma Bands track to the Highlight. And in order to see this link, I'll just scrub through the video so you can see that the two position tracks are linked. And once again, if I head back into Final Cut and save this out, we'll see there that that Chroma Bands effect now absorb that position data from the original iLight. As you can see, iLight can be used in a variety of ways with Beauty Essentials Unit inside of Final Cut Pro. For more tips and tricks just like this, including Beauty Studio and other tutorials coming up, don't forget to subscribe and click on that like button.